I've been asked to uh, say a few words about this very, very important uh, movement campaign to uh, get people to stop, stop talking in shul. Uh, I know that there have been many other very choshevah people who have participated in this campaign, and perhaps what I say is superfluous, but I do not want to be what the Gemara says, or chaver with dinner l'dvar mitzvah, and you don't participate. It's a muva sheni yachal iskain, chisar lo yuchal himanais. So let me share just a few words uh, on this uh, vital subject. And the Shulchan Aruch writes something in Hilchos Tfila, Simon Chuf Chav Dalid, Seif Seif Zayin that he writes no other place in Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch writes, Lo yasiach siches chulen b'shoa sha'ashat z'chayzer ha-tfila. Shulchan Aruch here is not talking about talking in shul. It's talking about talking during Chazar ha-shatz. V'im soch, the Shulchan Aruch writes, hu chayte. And if you talk during Chazar ha-shatz, it's an avera. But then the Mechaber says, the Gadol Avayne Minasai, the Geirimai. The talking during Chazar Sashat is Gadol Avayne Minasai, meaning it's so big that uh, one cannot even imagine the, the implications of it. Um, the Shulchan Aruch, to my knowledge, does not use that terminology anywhere else in Shulchan Aruch. Meaning, even such averes chamores as Chil Shabbos, or Iser Chometz with Pesach, or other other Yisurim that are Chayv Kares, the Mishnabur, the Shulchan Aruch does not use the lotion Gadol Avinim in a side that the aver is so egregious that it can't uh, it came out that there's no tshuva for it. The question is why? I mean, okay, it's bad to talk Chazaras Hashatz, but why should this? Warrant the severe repercussion of Goro Avayna Minasai. So I think I once heard from Ramatas Yel Solomon, he should be his own stark, that the reason for this is is because the Rebbe Shalom gives us this incredible tool called Tfila and Tfila Satsibur. And when a person talks in davening, talks in the shul, what, he, what in effect is he's spitting in the face of the Rebbe It's like someone gives you this present and you abuse it. So over here, the, the avla, it, it's not just the chet per se, but what the chet represents. And what it represents is a tremendous chutzpah to the Rebbe and for that, it's good all about him in the say. A person, Chas Shalom is a Mechal Shabbos. So he's Mechal Shabbos either. In, in olden days, because uh, of the Tzarech HaParnosa, because of the pressure of making a living, which, you know, 100 years ago, 980 years ago, people didn't work on Shabbos, they wouldn't be able to make a Parnosa. So a person had to be sorry. There was a, it's a horror to do it. Other things as well. But over here, why are you talking? You know, the answer is because you don't care. That is a chutzpah to the Yibbana Shalom. And when you're a machutzpah to the Yibbana Shalom, that's God Allah by the Minasai. So even though the Mechaber is speaking about talking in Chazar Hashats, I think it applies to, to, the, to talking in Shul as well, even in a time where where you know, it's not Chazar Sashat per se, because it's 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 a chutzpah to the Rebbe It's his. This is his house. You have to behave. You go to somebody's house. You have to behave. When you go ahead and you 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 don't treat the Beis Haknesses with the proper decorum, it's it's also it's a patch and put in the Rebbe It's slapping the Rebbe in his face. Because uh, you're you're abusing his house. You know, I heard recently somebody was invited to the White House for for an occasion in the Oval Office. And he explained that when you're in the Oval Office, 
right, right before the president comes in until after the president leaves. It's called a, a frozen, a freeze zone, which means nobody leaves. Nobody leaves, nobody enters, nobody leaves because the president is coming into the room. I assume that part of it is for security reasons, but that's the covet of the Malchus, you know. Everybody's at attention. A basic nessus, we can't even compare, can't even say the Oval Office is like a basic nessus. Basic nessus has Kedusha. It's the Mokum of the Melech Malcha and Melech Malchus Barcho. It's not merely the President of the United States. It's not merely the Oval Office. So if you were invited to the White House, you would abide by the rules, the ground rules of what it means to be in the Oval Office. You, know, you would you would not uh, talk out of turn. You would not uh, uh, run around. You would not uh, you, you you would not abuse it because you realize in the presence of the Oval Office, it's a historic place, and it's in and it's the president. Allah has come of a kama kalachim b'neishal kalachimer b'neishal kalachimer. The Bereshlam's house, his home. You have to treat it with decorum. You have to deal with respect. You have to, you have to, you have to treat it like a, you're supposed to treat a basic nessus. I happened to be at a chasana last night, and um, um, so the, the, the chuppah was going to be in the in the shul part of the of the of the of the of the of the, of the shul. The basic nessus of the sanctuary, and um, and I was because I you know I was waiting there, so just waiting for the chuppah to happen. There were two little kids, like running around playing playing tag, and the custodian, a black man, happened to walk into the room, and uh, he saw the kids running around, and he said, "You can't do that in here. This isn't a playground." This is in a playground. People dive in here. That's was that were the words of the black custodians. People dive in here. Uh, even if, if he understands that uh, what a basic nessus is, Allah come of come we the Bashalist people, we know what davening is, we know what a basic nessus is, we know what a shina is. We have to treat it with the utmost respect and covered that which it which it deserves.